Welcome class, this is part two of the high negative cash flow case study that we recently went over. In part one, I looked over the entire case study in a conservative way. In this video, we're gonna turn up the gas, right? We're gonna go more aggressive, unique strategies that we can improve this particular individual's husband and wife financial situation, right? So let's just take it to the whiteboard, picking up where we left off. You'll notice some of the things didn't move except for right here and, and this area right here and I added this, right? So recap on the four major numbers. We're starting off in October, 2023, making 6,450. Husband and wife, that's combined income. Total expenses are 11,135.64. Combination of living and debt expenses. Total debt is 392,592.27. Leaves us with a negative cash flow of 4,685.64. So first move, as I mentioned in part one, reduce expenses, but you'll notice how the number nearly doubled. So if we went aggressive and I and I put here exactly what we cut off and reduced. So completely removing dining out, $400 savings, completely removing spending that both husband and wife allocated as budgets, where it's like they, husband spends 600, wife spends 600. So if we just completely remove that, it's $1,200 back to our economy. Uh, they were paying for Lexington Law credit repair. So it's like a monthly subscription thing. They're gonna cancel that. That's 139 back into their economy. If they were to cancel all their other subscriptions, that'd be $78. And if they switched car insurance companies to save money, they could shop around and have someone offer them a deal, really just picking anyone that could save us quite a bit of money. I averaged maybe about $150 in savings there. And then the phone's going to reduce. They're going to save about $87. Their total is $2,054. Second move, redirecting cash flow. If we completely cut off all 401k contributions, that number might be in the neighborhood of $250, $300, what I estimated, like super low. I think it actually is a little bit higher because they're really generating like six figures. So that would be a higher number. So I'm just going off of the 250 number. And then third move, 401k loan. This is something they already did prior to meeting me. So they got $33,000 to use from their 401k loan. And we're going to allocate that to paying off debt instead of increasing credit score we're paying off debt to increase cash flow once they've spent the 33k the monthly repayment plan back to the 401k is 700 a month so whatever we pay off you're gonna have to minus 700 and then you'll see what the net gain would would be from that now the risk here of focusing on cash flow is we may not get to the credit score that we want to position us for move number four to get that first lien HELOC. The first lien HELOC is really what's gonna help us overall implement the velocity banking concept being the fifth move and buying more time to get us into a positive cash flow position. So we're gonna assume that we are successfully able to get that first lien HELOC position despite the different debts that we pay off. So the debts that I laid out here is a combination of wife's debt and husband's debt. I used the cash flow index formula to get me the most amount of cash flow based on the debts that I would eliminate. And that are, these are the debts here. They're all credit cards that we would be eliminating. So those are the balances. These are the payments. These are the interest rates. If you add it all up, this is the only card that doesn't get paid off in full from 33,000. When you, if you add up all these numbers, you'll have about 1930 left. So we just apply that to the balance, brings it down to 6270 The monthly payment would drop from 241 down to around 185 So that gives us a total cash flow of $1,277.56. Then you minus that from 700 bucks. Total reduction, 250 2054 1277 minus 700 you should get this number, right? 3,581.56 minus a seven. You should end up right here with a negative cash flow from 4,685.64 to now down to 2,881.56, which gives us about four and a half months of the savings before I run out of cash and then I'm going back into debt to pay things on time. So just to recap, this 
household has not been late on anything yet. So they're still current on everything. We have $13,000 in savings. Prior to that, they were just going into more debt to run bills and, and cover bills so nothing is late. So we have about a four and a half month window to reduce our negative cash flow position as much as humanly possible to stretch the 13 grand. The most, even in being aggressive here, the most that we're doing is about four and a half months is that we, is what we bought in terms of time. And in that four and a half months, I want to position myself credit wise to apply for a first position HELOC so that I can transfer my mortgage, traditional, 30 year fixed mortgage into a first lien HELOC, get a large capital line of credit. They owe 237 on their mortgage as of right now in October, 2023, All right, This is how much they owe. The 237,989.82 so October, 2023 by December, January, that balance will be a little bit less. The mortgage payment is like 2,600 and some change. So if we were to get a first position HELOC, the value of the property is over 600 grand. So we should have no issue getting approved for like 400, even in the neighborhood of almost a half a million dollar line of credit, right? The whole entire mortgage balance gets paid off. Now the HELOC is in the first position, first lien home equity line of credit, right? I assumed an interest rate of 8.5%. That's the current prime rate today. But just know that we can get a much better interest rate once we do our research with different banks, probably get like a six intro rate or five, even a mid 4% intro rate for the first six to 12 months. So that would make a difference. So again, overestimating the balance, the rate, the interest only payment would be around this number, 1,685.76. When you minus it from what the mortgage payment was, minus escrow, I did about minusing $700. So that brings my negative cash flow position now down to 2,181.56 around December, or January. Let's say we're in January. By February, I am now officially more than likely out of cash, right? I probably only got a couple hundred more dollars left. Maybe I can stretch it to March. But at that point, my savings by February or March of 2023, the savings is now completely depleted. Now I'm fully reliant on this first lien HELOC to keep everything current from from being late or anything from going into collections or going into a bankruptcy situation, right? So that's where we're at, 2,181.56. The other thing that I added in here to be aggressive, which is really not that aggressive, is I just said, look, increase your income by $550. If we can get it to 7K, that's gonna bring our negative cash flow position down to $1,254.08, right? So income here, expenses 8254.08 and then minus what did i do there minus 700 why did i do that i think i might have yeah okay that was that boom so we're here 7554.08 with a negative cash flow position of 1254.08 when you factor in the uh the income increasing as well so when your income increases the, the expense number that stood the same so i minus the 700 from from there here. And then I showed it as a reflection of here. I'll have to verify that. I have a feeling I might have made a little error there. You'll have to double check my math. There might be an error there. I'm a little iffy. I don't know why I did that twice, why I wrote it twice. I'm trying to figure it out. 37, boom. This 700 was from the 401k, which brought it down. All right, yeah, I think that's good. As we continue, we're still in a negative cash flow position, right? This is being aggressive. Still in a negative cash flow position. So to continue, I have the first lien HELOC. I'm going to move more debt into there. I'm going to move more debt into the line of credit. So I chose some other credit, four more credit cards. These are balances. These are the payments. Again, these are overestimated balances because, you know, four or five months from now, balances will be a little bit less, but, you know, overestimated interest rates. Add them up, 718. The 718, ah, I think that's what I did, right? This 718, I probably, I probably put it right together there. And I showed the balance. When you add up these balances to the 237, and then I overestimated it some more because of interest, I put 270,000 owed on our first position HELOC by February of 2024. And if we can continue to increase our income another $500 or so, then we'll be in the break-even position, right? So I'm showing expenses of 
7,536.08. Yeah, that's what I did. That's what I did. Yeah, because notice how it's 7,554 right there, 7,536. So I factored it in a little bit earlier than expected. Negative 536.08 at this point, right? So from 1254.08, after adding that in there, we're down to right around negative 500, $500. So my final solutions here is we need to continue to make more money, be aggressive on the income increasing. I know they can do it. I know they can get up to like 10K even. So just adding an extra $500 would put us to a break even position. Now, if for whatever reason they're, they're having trouble making more money, then I would say let's whiff. Let's withdraw some money from the brokerage account. Let's pay off the car. That's a $306 cash flow recovery. And then let's apply for a 0% credit card. We can move some debt out of the home equity line of credit and just simply have debt sit at zero, which then reduces the actual net interest of the interest only payment on the HELOC itself. So that was a lot, but the, there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. If you're in a situation financially where you are in a very, very high negative cash flow situation and you're you're just trying to figure out how can I buy time to increase my income, to reduce expenses, to avoid things from going late into collections, into bankruptcy, into financial ruin, into repossessions and you know, foreclosure. We're trying to avoid all of that. Velocity banking is a great way to really finesse, move money around. That's all we did was just move a bunch of money around into a lower interest rate environment. We got more capital. We just simply bought more time. So at this point, we're like March of 2024. And maybe let's say we're still negative cash flow, but we're only negative cash flow by say 500 bucks. And if I have a credit line of 400 grand and I owe 270, 275, my balance is going to go up. But if I'm doing velocity banking, it's going to go up slowly. So it's only going to go up by that negative cash flow position of say $500 plus the interest costs. So maybe that's $1,800 in interest, $1,500. So maybe it's, so the balance is increasing by maybe $2,000 each and every month. So 270, the 272, the 274, 276, 279. It's going to keep increasing more and more each month because you're not actually paying down the tool, which means you're paying more in interest, right? And so if we were to pay off that car, now we're at a negative cash flow position of $200. And if we can get our income up 500 more bucks, now we're in the green. Once we get in the green, now we got to maintain it. That's even, that's hard too. Now we got to maintain our cost of living, our lifestyle. We got to maintain that, continue to reduce waste. We have to continue to increase our income. And now we're creating the gap. Now we're focusing on creating the gap. As I create more and more of a gap, now I'll actually start to see my credit line reduce, right? And as I see my credit line reduce on the first position HELOC, then I can throw some more debt into there. In this particular case, the only debts they have remaining after everything we pushed into the first lien, only thing we have remaining are uh, two student loans. And each of those payments are like 250, almost 300 Fifty dollars or so. If we move that in there, then we'll be looking at a mid cash flow five seven hundred dollars or so. But at that point, it's an income problem, right? Like we just need to increase the income. We can only reduce so much, right? They have kids, home expenses, you know, you name it, right? Running a family is not cheap in the United States of America, right? So, and they're in Texas. So all in all, action steps here, right? I hope you picked up a lot. Let me take it to the board so you can just see everything again, right? Need to know your numbers. How do we cut expenses? We can go aggressive, we can go moderate, and then gradually increase. Okay, great. What assets do we have? Do we have any savings? How do we stretch savings? Do we have any, any assets that we can borrow from? So it's going to be a temporary loss because you're no longer you know, earning on the money that you borrow. Okay, it is what it is. We're trying to fix today's problem with future money so that we'll have more future money if we can change our mindset. Okay, great. How do we move debt from these high interest locations, move the payments into a central location? That's going to help you buy more time with a first lien HELOC, second lien HELOC, personal line of credit in that regard, maybe even a cash value life insurance policy. And you keep it going, velocity banking, 
position yourself and then you you know you can't get away from this you got to increase this got to increase your skills gifts and talents provide more value to the marketplace have to no exceptions action steps join finance geek ministry if you're in a negative cash flow position paycheck to paycheck very very low cash flow in a bad financial position join finance geek ministry if you're willing to commit all right that's the thing. you don't have to give me money i don't want your money if you're in a negative cash flow position i don't want your money right for this particular case study they actually did pay. And then we had that phone call. Once I saw the numbers, I was like, hey, I don't want you paying me. You need to keep every dollar in your economy right now. Once I help you get to a positive cash flow position, however many calls we have, I'll just invoice you for the difference. Once you are doing better, you're gonna be happy to pay me and be happy to give me money, okay? So again, negative, paycheck to paycheck, low, low cash flow, barely can afford you know, to invest in yourself. Join Finance Geek Ministry. It's a ministry of finance. We gather two times a month, comes with a free course accountability group, a community. We gather, we answer questions, we figure things out. If you're willing to exchange social currency, likes, subscribes, follows, comments, sharing, testimony, those different things, I will give you my time. I got a whole process in the Finance Geek Ministry course. Once you join, that will walk you through that. And then for those who are doing well financially, you're doing good and you can invest in yourself. Let's jump on a call. We can start there and if you like the, my values and principles and morals and like how I operate, then we work long-term together, get in some financial coaching program, long-term service, and we work one-to-one. -one. If you're doing really well financially, multiple six figures, seven figures, and you're like, dude, love your mission, love the channel, love what you're doing, how can I support? How can I give financially? How can I support you? So you can go and help more people, reach out to me directly. You can email me directly, denzel at builder to contributor.com and just say, high income earner, high producer, or you can say kingdom financier, kingdom provider, right? Maybe you're faith-based. You know, I'm a man of faith and you want to be a kingdom financier. You want to finance a ministry that targets and helps people that are in bad financial situations so that they can get into a good, solid, stable, secure financial position. Now I can start pouring seed in terms of their mindset, getting them to have that paradigm shift, that light bulb moment that says, hey, I think I can 10x my lifestyle. I think I can 10x my income. I think I can 10x my production. Now that puts them into a philanthropic position where they can contribute back into the ministry. And it creates a flow, a ripple effect. So there's different stages for everyone that's watching my channel. I got high income earners that are watching the channel. They're just supporting. They're bringing people my way. And I'm handling the actual day-to-day. -day. And then there's people that are doing okay, pretty good, but they want to do better. And so you can afford to invest in one-to-one -one coaching with me. Great. And then there's those that are not doing too hot They're in a bad situation, right? You don't have to pay me anything. You can learn for free on this channel. You can break down the numbers for yourself. You can see what I'm saying. I'm going day by day, line by line, number by number to make it happen. God bless you. I look forward to meeting with you, talking to you on a phone call, potentially even in person, maybe even seeing you at my live event later this year. December 16th, 2023. Register below and I will see you there. God bless. We'll be talking soon.